All right, welcome back, guys. This is going to be a continuation of the previous resonance video. Um, just a quick recap: I introduced uh, this little example over here to kind of just show you or give you the basic idea of what resonance is. So now we're going to just talk a little bit more in depth about resonance structures and how we draw them. So I showed you guys here these curved arrows, right? How we went from this structure all the way to this structure. All right. Now, when it comes to resonance, there are certain rules for how curved arrows are drawn. Right? There are exactly three rules of curved arrows. So I drew out three little examples here for you guys, and we'll go through each one. Um, so the first legal move that you can do with the curved arrow is going from a pi bond. Actually, I'll just pi bond to a lone pair, all right? And so we show this by taking the arrow, starting it from the pi bond, going to that carbon. And that implies it's going to become a lone pair, all right? And so we can see that here, here's our lone pair, and our pi bond is now gone, or it used to be over there. So that's the first legal move. Second, is lone pair to pi bond. All right, so we start with our lone pair, take it and we go to the pi bond, and uh, to this line right here, this bond, and we form a pi bond. So that's number two. And the last legal move we can do is pi bond to pi bond. So, so all you do is you start from the one pi bond, and you go and you form another one. So here's our new pi bond. Okay. So let's look at these examples a little bit better. You can see we have a double bond here, right there. And we show that the arrow is going to go onto that carbon. This bond is consisted of two electrons, and so we are going to move two electrons directly onto that carbon, give it a lone pair. Now I'm not going to go through the formal charge calculation part of that. If you guys um, are having trouble with that, maybe stop the video here and see why these formal charges exist on these molecules. That way you can calculate them out and it'll help you get it. some more practice with formal charge. And also, um, obviously, do the workshop quizzes and pre-class. And so, back to this, we have two electrons that are moving onto that carbon to form that lone pair. And so, the charge on that carbon became negative, right? But why did the charge over here become positive on that carbon at the end? Well, if we look at it, that carbon has... Uh, actually, let's start here. That carbon here is going to have two hydrogens, right? Because it had a, one bond to a carbon here and a second bond there. So that's two out of its four possible bonds. And now we that means we can only have uh, two other hydrogen bonds. And so that means this carbon has two hydrogen bonds and, a, and one carbon-carbon bond, right? That's three bonds and no lone pairs. If we calculate out that formal charge, we're going to get a positive formal charge. So that's why there's a positive formal charge at that end carbon. Okay? Also, you can think about it this way. We took electrons that were at one point connected between both of those two carbons, and we moved it onto exactly only one carbon. Okay? So before, they were sharing those electrons, right? They were sharing those two, but now one gets both of them. So the one that gets both of them has way more electron density than it had before. So it's negative, right? Electrons are negatively charged. And the other one over here was sharing the lone pair, that bond, but now it has none of those electrons. So it's deficient. So it's positively charged. Right? If that helps, you can think of it that way. 
Okay, let's go on to example two. This one is should be pretty straightforward. Um, if the first example made sense, we're just going from this lone pair right here to this bond right there. And so the reason we're allowed to do this is because we see that the carbon over here is deficient in electrons. Okay, it doesn't have a full octet. It only has uh, two hydrogens, and we still have that one carbon-carbon bond. That's six electrons. That means it's not filled with a stable octet of eight electrons, so it's deficient. So we are allowed in this case to move that lone pair and form a pi bond between those two carbons, like we did to get this structure. So that is okay. That is a legal move. Now, um, if that doesn't make any sense, I'd pause it, rewind, and try to rewatch. If not, please email me, ask a TA. I'll try to maybe edit the video or maybe make a post just to explain it a little bit better with more diagrams if that's necessary. But if not, we'll just move on to the third one. So we're going pi bond to pi bond, okay? So if we look, the principle is pretty much the same. We have a pi bond right there, and we have over here, our target area is going to be forming a bond right there, okay? Now this carbon isn't going to change. Regard if you look at one second, this carbon here and that carbon over there, it's the same one. And they're both going to be exactly the same. They just have a double bond at one point and two other single bonds to two carbons. All right. And we also have a hydrogen right there. All right. So in reality, nothing is going to happen to that carbon over there. Double bond just simply changes the side it's on. But the reason we're allowed to even change the side it's on is because we have that positive charge that I had in the beginning. Okay, and so that's a deficient carbon, and so we can draw an arrow that shows that this pi bond is moving across to that uh, to form a new pi bond. Okay. Now the thing you need to be careful is you can't move electrons certain distances. So you see that I'm moving this pi bond over here about one carbon. Right, we have one carbon here, and I'm moving it only from pi to pi around one. That is the maximum distance you can go with one curved arrow. You can't try to draw something like uh, this and doing um. Actually, hold on. So you can't draw something like that. That's not correct. Um, we can only show them moving a distance of one. So if I had something here, right, and I just erase that, we can then go and do that, pi to pi, perfectly fine. And that rule applies to the other ones. You can't turn a pi bond into a lone pair, something like four carbons away, or a lone pair to a new pi bond three carbons away, all right? Those are the three legal moves. Now, one of the uh, worst mistakes that you can do in resonance is break a single bond, all right? Of all the things to do in resonance, breaking a single bond, it may be the worst. So if I gave you guys this example here, okay, and you try to draw a resonance structure of that, actually, um, and you try to draw a resonance structure that trying to go, oh, I'll uh, just go like that, all right? That's not possible. You have to start from a pi bond or from a lone pair. If we start working on single bonds, that's going to get into the problem of breaking them. And when you break the single bonds, the, re the uh, molecule is going to become different. And resonance structures only apply to the same molecules. Remember, resonance structures are different ways to represent the electron flow of the same structure. So if we're just starting to break the structure, then it's not the same as what we had before. 
all right so never break single bonds and also single bonds are just um, are also called sigma bonds you may hear that sometimes okay and so yeah those are the three important legal moves and one of the worst mistakes that you could make in resonance is to just ne is ever breaking if you ever break a single bond you've done something wrong all right always from a lone pair to a pi bond and in the next video i'm going to be talking about uh, showing you guys more resonance structures and a couple rules when trying to think of how to draw resonance structures and i'll show you guys examples so that you can uh, see at least maybe how i'm thinking about it how if you guys like my method you can think about it that way or if you like the method of the ta you can choose to ignore my method and uh, just do it that way or if you have your own obviously that's all fine but i'm just going to show you a couple examples so that to get you into that uh, mental state of resonance structures and more curved arrow and formal charge practice to come with it. So I'll see you guys in the next video.